It is Saturday the 3rd of September and this is the future of photography. Hey everybody, Adrian here and with me Jeremiah. How you doing buddy? Very good, happy to be back. Yeah, full swing. Yep. It does we have had a bit of a summer summer break because the three of us were all off in different parts of the world. Chris has been all the way down to Romania, I think. I've been to the Transylvania. Uh, Transylvania. Yeah, I've <laughs> been to the Highlands of Scotland. You've been where have you been? I have been to uh San Diego <laughs> and Los Angeles. Sometimes okay, even that's, that's venturing into Hollywood. Yeah. I've been happy to be home uh, because, as many listeners know, I've been away in production this last year for about five months. So it feels really good to be back in California despite the political noise. Well, it's good to speak to you. It does feel like several weeks and uh, since, we, since we got a chance to chat. So uh, it's good to catch up. And uh, we have a, a, a topic from my travels today. Um, uh, we've got, I've called the show. It's a, a bit, a bit of a play on words. I've called the show Roadworks. Um, didn't you know? Have travelled quite a lot around the Highlands of Scotland, and in the summers they do in a lot of cold and snowy places, or wintry places. They do their, all their roadworks in, in in the summer when the roads are actually visible. Uh, and uh, although we haven't suffered too badly, but uh, I thought, why not? Why not talk about? what i've been doing on my holidays <laughs> and i was good yeah well i talked I, I think i've talked previously on the show a little bit about the fact that i've started a photo journal this year uh and i thought you know what why don't i do a photo journal on my holidays uh and then i started getting into it and it gave me lots of good opportunities to geek out and technology which we can talk about as well as figure out because you know it is it is it overthinking it? T tell me this. Give me your honest opinion, Jeremiah. Is it overthinking and over engineering something to try and work out the workflow for your holiday photo notes? <laughs> well, some would consider that near insanity. Uh, uh, others would consider it absolutely necessary. And most uh, people would not even give it a second thought. So uh, what makes it interesting, I always uh, embrace, is process. So while you ascribe the holiday, the holiday is merely the test bed for being able to get your arms around what it takes to go from zero to 100 and create something very specific on a subject. And since you are on holiday, what better uh, opportunity than the opportunities of actually capturing an experience that you'd like to maintain through memory? Um, in, in the past, it would have been uh, sitting us all down with a carousel projector and showing us 6,000 slides, many of which are the same shot over and over again. But now, here's the book. Enjoy it as you wish. But having done that, you may go, you know, there is a stock car race three miles from the house with the most interesting characters. I think I'm going to just capture that subject, put a zine together, and just put it out there. And I assure you that all stock car racing fanatics, drivers, and fans, if they were aware of it, which is another separate thing that's called marketing, as you well know, <laughs> But if they were to come in contact with that, would probably be tickled in terms of their curiosity, at least to experience it. So the long answer is I embrace the focus on process. It's not really about the holiday. That's the test bed. Once it's done effectively, then for you and yours and your friends and family and fans, they'll love the, they'll love the zine. Because okay, it's so an that's, example. So that's, I like that. That's a very good answer. Thank you. That the it's it's interesting because it, you're right actually now, now you say it it is because it I do like to tinker right I do like to play around and you know it does give me a, pot a potential opportunity to buy new toys related to photography of course which is always a nice place to be and yeah just to just to play and, and be creative in a different way so let, let me tell you about let, let me tell you about a couple of the bits of this I'm not going to go through everything in the nth degree of detail because 
uh, some of these things are relatively obvious. So, of course, I did use a camera to take some photographs. We don't need to talk too deeply. We don't need to talk too deeply about that. I didn't plan very much about what I was going to shoot. I wanted it to be a fairly organic thing. I did think about um, that in the sense that I thought about capturing particular types of images. I did ha- I did consider that I wanted it to be bit more than a here's a thing that we went to see right there's a snapshot of a mountain a snapshot of a statue a snapshot yeah or whatever i did want it to be a bit more than i wanted there to be a bit of personality in it so i thought maybe i'd do a little bit of writing uh, as well and try and make that so that yeah come to come to life a bit and to capture some of the smaller things uh you know as well as some of the the big things so yeah just uh, trying to think of an example so you know, one one evening one of the places we stayed at there was a table tennis table so i've got a whole two or three pages of spread in in my journal that is just photos of me and the kids playing table tennis <laughs> or as we call it here ping pong well ping pong yes absolutely uh, uh or as uh, uh, boris johnson calls it over here whiff waff which is a, a, an old-fashioned name for it but there you go so it's, it's so there, there's some there's some fun stuff in that but other than that you know no no surprises on the capture side of it i took i took a camera with me and i took photographs um and equally possibly no surprises really on what i did with them to get them off the camera you know i took the card out of the camera i stuck it in a card reader i stuck that card reader into my ipad because i was traveling light i didn't take a full computer uh and uh that allowed me to import the photographs and have a look at them where i started to geek out was when i started thinking about well how how am i going to print these photos right if i want to make a journal as i go along how am i going to print them so uh i probably listeners will probably be aware that i've had for years uh, an instax mini printer and uh, i thought okay i could print instax mini and then i thought well do i really want to print instax mini um and it uh, and you know and you'll go broke first of all you go broke doing <laughs> well, there's, <it>. but <laughs> there's a bit of that it has gone so the the instax has gone up in the uk not as much as negative film uh or or slide film um so it, it yeah which is now double more or less what it was a while ago um so but instax has gone up a bit um uh so i did think okay and and i thought well you know it's it's not really quite what I wanted by way of an aesthetic. And the, part of that is something just really prosaic, right? It's, an Instax is quite a fat photograph, right? Because it's got all those chemicals inside the envelope inside it. And, it. and that's great when you've got one of them. When you want to stick 30 or 40 of them in a book, <laughs> and the book's only fairly narrow itself, it's only a little paper notebook, I thought that's not going to work very well. There's an opportunity here, isn't there, to, to, you know, to do something different. So I ended up, and I can't remember if I talked about this on the podcast before, I ended up buying this, which is a Kodak, I think it's called a Mini Mini Print 2, um, Mini 2 Retro, it says on it, but other it, it's got several names and I can't, but, but it's a small handheld um, uh, dye sublimation portable printer that works off Bluetooth. So you download an app to your phone or your tablet um, and Bluetooth connect to the printer and then you can print uh, credit card sized photographs and they just come out on a little credit card sheet and uh, sort of credit card sized sheet of paper. It's great. Does it does it use those rollers, three color rollers that roll through in miniature? It does. Uh, uh, this, this one's still in its packet, but if you can see, if I hold it up to yeah. the camera, you can yeah. see it's it's a little miniature die sublimation yeah. print cartridge no, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, a little uh, coloured cellophane in it. <laughs> so the, the the photos must be extremely crisp, beautiful color, and semi archival theoretically uh well let's go through we'll come back to that if i may because actually there's a step prior to to that which is a, a software as a step um so so th- this is the and this is the bit that i did geek out about which is which is the preparation of pictures to print so i i typically shoot these days in a 16 by 9 or a 9 by 16 ratio and and go from there i tend to see the world a bit more in that sort of shape than any other kind of aspect ratio and the printer prints um it's got i can't uh, the, it's not a 16 by 9 it's closer to a 16 by 10 
um, uh, but it's it's a non-standard ratio um, that, that the printer prints. But the software that it comes with doesn't do very well if your photo is not the right aspect ratio. It it expands the photo to fill the whole of the piece so of paper it's, you're printing it's, on. It stretches it. Uh, yeah, it, it keeps it. It keeps its proportions but it does stretch it to fill. So it basically just cuts the ends off your photo. <laughs> and I, don't so like, it, it, I don't like that. No. I don't know about you, but when I print... No, something, I, I don't want any... I don't want hardware to mess with my aesthetic. Exactly. I, I would prefer to mess with the software's functionality. Yes. Yes. And, and unfortunately, the app that comes with this is a bit simplistic and doesn't do that. So second, I, are there aftermarket fixes? Uh, it doesn't support air print or anything like that, the off the shelf aftermarket stuff. Um, so I had to do it. I take a do it yourself kind of option. And I, and I had to figure out a way to change my images. And I thought, OK, well, what I can do is I can put a border on them. Right. And I can make that border uh, the right aspect ratio for the f for the printer and then the printer will print out the whole of my picture and not cut out the ends and that was when i dived into the rabbit hole with great glee <laughs> 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 the answer long story short the answer is i wrote a shortcut um and uh by which i mean shortcut with a capital s so the shortcut uh, the the macro programming language that you can get in in apple uh, devices so so there's a desktop version on the mac and there's a there's a mobile version on ios and you can write it's, a it's shortcut the, which if if then right there's a lot of there's a lot of if then yeah if then statements uh, in these things so you can work out logic you can put menus on the screen to choose from things you can capture you know um you can capture a photo uh, or a file you can process text you can do all sorts of things it's actually quite powerful um, and I thought, OK, well, I just need to find the programmatic way, the consumer friendly programmatic way, because I'm not a coder of, 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 of working this out. And I found that there's a shortcut. Um, uh, what do they call action? They call them actions called overlay. Mm -hmm. And you can take two images and you can overlay one on the other. Uh, and so I thought, OK, I can do that because I could prepare like a plain white one or a plain black one that's bigger than my photo and I could sure. overlay the photo onto that and it would then be the yeah the if I made the the the, the plain um plain border the right aspect ratio for the printer then it would all work yeah and it it and it did <laughs> <laughs> much to my surprise actually not why, much to my why, surprise, why wouldn't it work as conceived well so as with all software development there was a lot of debugging to do because <laughs> my original th yeah yeah and then a lot of you know emerging complexity let's say like okay so i've done it oh no hang on a minute this port th this photograph is portrait not landscape and so my resizing algorithm won't work now so what do i do with that oh no i'm going to need yet another if statement to, to to find out the the ratio of the height to the the width of the photograph i'm inputting into this process and then do take different logical paths and do different things with it to get the right outcomes um, so it did take quite a lot of processing um but it was fun. I don't know if you if you played around much with shortcuts and things like that. I know you do you do some, uh, uh, things in yeah. Photoshop and stuff like that, don't you? Yeah, I mean, what I would do, obviously, I would just take the images into Lightroom or Photoshop, adjust the aspect ratio, do very similar to what you've done. In other words, just in Photoshop, it's very easy. Just add a layer, define the the size. Um, and just drop the picture on top of it, adjust it to your, easy to adjust, you can just pull the edges or define another size, and then flatten the image. And uh, But uh, the easier thing for me is just um, email them to a drugstore <laughs> and pick them up in the next town. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's the, uh, again, for... Research purposes, I embrace it. A lot of fun to solve those problems. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. You know, several years ago, and now it's over 15, um, I was doing, I was consulting to Nokia. And we, were, and we went through Amsterdam. We were meeting with some technologists. But when we finally got to Helsinki, we were talking, uh, 
we had this idea to build, and this is like 15 years ago, a baseball size um, satellites, which we would then get astronauts to literally <laughs> throw <laughs> <basically> out into space. <laughs> into space, and they would run for, say, you know, a couple of years just on basic uh, solar power, and then they'd fade, and that we could broadcast advertising. <laughs> globally Delightful. with one of these you know, or whatever right um and so we went down a rabbit hole but to find out if that's possible and um we we did find companies that were very interested in building these but of course the price it was very very expensive now this is a business you know what I mean? They launched these things like throwing popcorn in the air. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is a long way of, of saying embracing those rabbit holes often leads you into other uses of that very same printer. In other words, while you're exploiting the weaknesses of the printer and how to work around, you may go, ah, I can use this weak weakness as a strength. I guess it's called jujitsu, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right or judo, you know, um, and and that's when the expression meets the technology that is greater than some of the parts, and, and that has usually come to bear when I go down those holes and really start to experiment. That's interesting. That I'm spending so much time trying to stick that round hole in a square peg yeah, yeah. vibe that at a certain point I just like. You know, maybe cut down, expand the hole, cut down the peg, whatever it is, fuse it, glue it, whatever metaphor will come to mind for anybody listening. And that creates something really exciting. And people go, like, wow, how'd you do that? I don't really know yet. Because re then recreating it is, is a problem. But die subprints, I used to have that early Canon printers, only 8x10, print die sub, beautiful, beautiful stuff, very glossy, very, I mean, just stunning. Um, and I think I, I probably still have prints that lasted. They were very, very good. We've, so we've got, there's got that. got prints that are probably, so we had a, an, a, a, I have a Canon selfie printer. Uh, it's not the first one, I think it's, um, we had an earlier one, but before things like air print were invented. So when the, when you, when, when they started making them, you could print from phones really easily and stuff like that. We, we upgraded, but, but even, I mean, there's no sign of the original prints that we've had from that fading or anything like that and those are going to be 15 years old at this point and that's just from a consumer grade printer that you can buy for 150 quid you know so it's uh, it's um it's yeah. i really like that i really like the die sub technology for consumer grade printing i i mean i i mm. i and i I only do little bits and bobs of printing at home i uh so any, anything serious i would send out but uh, have you i have a question for you mm. Much like, I guess, like Chris had to plan his trip out in terms of, I assume he took his EV, so he had to plan some oh, electric. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to plan it. If you were doing a road trip and had a relationship with a, a good print house that you could just upload, like here we have Darkroom now if you use film, you know, but, but digitally. There's so many of these things, just pop them up, get a good quality print and have them sent to addresses along the way that you knew you were. So as you arrived in destination two, there would be <clears throat> a package waiting for you. Of course, we have to deal with the, <laughs> the Royal Mail, <laughs> but may, maybe there's a more, you know, uh, UPS standard or or. Um, you know, a, a more yeah, efficient they're, they're, way could, of shipping. It, it can conceivably it could be done. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, you you could do that. I, the thing the the thing for me though is I suppose the 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 constraint I put on myself is I wanted this to be all dead simple. So I mean, you talked yeah. about um, going back to the software bit for a moment. <clears> you <throat> talked about doing all those things in Photoshop, which of course 
I could do in Affinity Photo as well. Um, sure. And, and yeah. my first thought was, can I write an automation in Affinity Photo that might do that sort of thing? Yeah. And then I realized, actually, I didn't even need to do that. I could write something that would work on my phone or my iPad or my laptop completely the same you know, across all of those platforms. Sure. Uh, and it would run in, it runs in about three or four seconds. And I even wrote a little choice into it. I can choose whether my photos have a black border or a white border. Oh, right. so, yeah. Yeah. And, and I could write that to be whatever. I could design a border with flowers on it if I wanted to. And I, and the next step, actually, a bit of promotion for the podcast here, is in a couple of weeks as we record this, I will be uh, at the photo and video show at the NEC in Birmingham. Um, I'm going to upgrade my little automation script here, my little shortcut, to be able to take a photo so, uh, and uh, put it on a border, a bit like a Polaroid or an Instax, and on that little white bit, the little fat white bit, to print the TFOP logo. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have half an image of when I'll, be, I'll see people, and some of them will be friends or some of the people that, yeah, are people I may just have met or met, yeah. And, and I'll be able to, yeah, if we end up with some fun photos from an evening out or something like that, I'll be able to print them on the spot with the logo on the side. And, uh, Very well and, done. Yeah. Totally support it. Uh, I, th I think that those kinds of choices, like writing those scripts, like in Photoshop, there's actions. Yeah. So same way. You could just run all of those things, create the borders, make a choice. Uh, so it will, when you run it, it'll actually create different levels. It will add color to the border if you wish yeah. or not. It will apply the image in the right space, and boom, and it'll take, like, no time. Excuse me while I... Okay. <laughs> Somebody's calling you early on a Saturday morning? No, that is a, that, that's a marketing call if there oh, ever dear. was one. Oh, God. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's, it's interesting. Yeah, so uh, clearly there are n number of tools and everybody has their favourites. I was just really pleased that I could do something that would work on my phone with basically with no interaction for me and it runs in just a few seconds um, and it spits out the, 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 the processed photo with, um, and saves it into a photo album called To Print and then I just point, you know, my, my reasonably one-dimensional Kodak printing app um, I can just look at that folder, pick up the right photo. It's got the border around it that I've chosen and I can print it and, and get the whole photo and then stick it with my book, which is great. And I've enjoyed doing that. I've enjoyed doing that. You, you asked me about the printer and or you, you, made, you, you said, oh, because it's Dice Hub, it's going to be great, isn't it? <laughs> And I said, I'll well, come it back. should, I'll it come should back be. So I have to if say, it's proper. This, I, mean, you know, I, I am pleased with it. I have to say, so this is not, this is not me slating this product in any way. Um, I mean, it is a, a cheap and cheerful product. It's designed to be very portable and be used on the, on the fly for fun stuff. And it does that really, really well. Um, the colors are bright. Um, the printing can be sharp, um, you know, if you've made a sharp photograph. Um, and uh, and the colours, you know, it, 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 it's pleasing. It's aesthetically pleasing, right? And it's reasonably true to what you see on your screen. So you don't have to do a load of editing to, like, so I don't know, raise the blacks or whatever, you know, raise the shadows to get it to actually print any detail. Um, I did find there was one issue with it, um, which is that it's not great at printing black and white <coughs> images. You end up with blocks of tone. Uh, yeah. as if as if there were fewer available tones than you might want so it doesn't have 16 billion grays for example it seems to have mm. about 200 of them or something like that perhaps and so you end up with something that is is uh, a bit blocky compared to what you see on your screen but yeah i, I found it's been good i mean uh, polaroid black and white unless you get the polaroid black and white film or equivalent uh, you never get a real crispy black. You never get a pure white, which is good for certain pictures. Uh, there's a milkiness to it often. Um, and that can serve a really nice aesthetic if that's where you're working in that space. But if you're trying to, again, jam a kind of classic <laughs> Ansel Adams aesthetic into one of these uh, printers, there's limitations that will upset you. Yeah. Uh, if you set your expectations in the wrong way. Um, I think that, the, you know, the main thing, uh, as I pointed out, is find out, which I always try to do, <clears throat> what the weak links are. 
you know, how far can you push it before it breaks? Yeah. yeah. What, mm-hmm. what, what is the, the sweet spot of the technology? And then kind of compare what it was purely designed for, like to get the absolute best out of it, and then where it completely falls down. Mm-hmm. So once I've established that, then I feel that it's very interesting to be able to merge things. For example, you know, again, in taking your your kind of workflow and doing a really snappy, high contrast, black and white version of your image as a layer, your border as a layer, and your color as a layer weighted correctly in terms of and or even a defocused layer and merging these together to give you the same shot because once you're going down that road of like adjusting layering up using the you know the the what you've written we'll call it the code mm-hmm. right the action then you can have an action for pure color action for something really invented layering up and and third a glow and That's a really good point i like that i like that i think um actually and as we record this we're a few weeks away from ios 16 being released and in ios 16 they have a thing called uh i can't remember the name for it but they they have much greater support for application developers <laughs> to create their own shortcut actions so you could imagine you know let, um, uh, think of a i don't know a, a reasonably high powered ios photo processing app um, darkroom right the, the app mm. darkroom yeah yeah um, you know, something that's like actively you know got got good development going on to it um you could access some of the more sophisticated photo processing uh, things in darkroom in a programmatic way so that yeah. you could automate kind it. of what there, i'm talking about yeah. there yet but i think in the next year or so hopefully some of the uh, some some of the people that are really putting a lot of effort into the <coughs> photo processing image processing apps will, will make this happen um, and especially seeing as nowadays um i think darkroom is a bit like luma fusion and it'll work on all the mac platforms right because they all run on the same hardware now so um, so the same application will run on your laptop as well as on your phone. Sure, um, and then pe- people will then be selling. You know, people sell fil- filters or oh, workflows. Do that. Yeah, but there'll be there'll be lots of that stuff. But I could imagine I could, you know, having having a more developing. Let's say I'm not I'm not writing code, am I? But let's say I'm developing a workflow, an automated workflow, and testing testing and developing. And I could imagine, yeah, that could be interesting. It does it, it does seem a little bit uh it, it, it again it, it seems like working very very hard to achieve something that is really only a very informal outcome and and to try and work that hard around a constraint of of a, a tiny little cheapy printer it's it's sort of strengthening the rest of the signal processing path to support the weakest link in the chain isn't it which which seems a little bit not quite the right way around but except if you get some surprising result well that's true yeah that's true um, the, then the you're a genius. <laughs> have you ever tried printing black and white onto color Instax? Uh, all the time. Uh, interesting, because that's um, before they invented black and white Instax. Um, I used to do that quite a lot with my little printer, and actually the color Instax prints black and white really nicely. And because I already have an Instax printer, I guess I had the op- I have the option in the future if I wanted to do a little photo book that was just black and white and I wanted to do that as sure. I was moving along, I could just buy a few packs of Instax and print onto that or even buy the Instax mono now that you know um yeah. uh that that's uh, it's a good a good way if you're if you've got one of these new Instax printers that um uh, sorry new Instax cameras that's a digital camera that with a printer built in rather than a full analog one a good workaround is definitely to buy the color film and then print it as black and white <laughs> it's cheaper <laughs> um, is it is it i guess so 
yeah so uh but it's uh yeah it, it that's yes that would be a rabbit hole for another day i think yeah i think you probably would need some more third-party app support for the whole the shortcuts environment to be able to automate that but i could definitely see myself jumping into that rabbit hole too <laughs> oh yeah you know bottom line is just follow it down the rabbit hole and be open for your initial intentions to change and embrace yes. those change yes. and then follow it where it may take you. You may be very pleased at the end of the day. Even with images that fail, you will learn something to apply to your next go around. So, yeah, no, I'm really glad we've had this conversation because you've helped you, you've you've articulated something in this whole thing about, you know, the the the, the actual, you know, the, the the holiday, the trip is the test bed. And actually, it's the it's the research and the experimentation and the creativity is the thing I, you've articulated that in a way that really resonates for me. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's why I do it. It's got nothing to do with all it is. Your family. <laughs> nothing to do with family and your well, trip. And it, well, right, you could look at it. It's just that, it, that that's what makes the trips bearable. But actually, I, I do enjoy <laughs> with my family anyway. Sure. So it's not an issue. But that, no, that's yeah the way you've, yeah, you've really helped me set, like, understand a bit more and like, another level it works at. So thank you very much. <laughs> very, very good. Pick of the week pick of the week well uh okay so i'm gonna go with uh my pick of the week is the the journal that i've been writing in and i can't remember if i've talked about this too much on this podcast before but i'm sure i've shown you it's a it's a leather bound journal uh, and inside it has replaceable um uh, replaceable notebook inserts and i've literally been and you can see that i can show this up to the camera and you won't see it because it's an audio only podcast unfortunately but i've literally been printing stuff and sticking stuff and they really oh, okay. are about five pages of photos of table tennis right so <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that stuff underneath is that called handwriting it is yes um well I, I tell you what actually that's a very generous interpretation of what i've put on the page there because my handwriting is atrocious um, it's, but it, it is writing writing a few notes so i can remember what we've done and it's the silly frivolous things like you know not sure. just that we went and saw a mountain right because let's face it the highlands of scotland are full of mountains um although i didn't visit i did enjoy visiting the talisker distillery that was nice on on the isle of sky um, i've i've been there so i i i know i, I know it <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful place just by the sea there and where the Talisker Distillery yeah. is. Um, so, uh, yeah, so my um, uh, my pick of the week is uh, that it's a, the, the journal itself is, is by a company called Wanderings. It's the Wanderings Journal. Be a link in the show notes uh, and they'll sell you the leather cover and they will sell you the, the paper inserts and what have you. Um, there are any number of brands that do similar products. This was just one that I found and decided to try uh, and I quite like. So that's my pick of the week. How about you? Mine is a journal magazine called Art Doc Photography Magazine. And it's okay. listed in the, it'll be listed in the show notes, but it's a very thoughtful, very uh, wide net embracing um, many different aesthetics and points of view and uh, worth a subscription it, it's it's really very special so i highly recommend it for inspiration and enjoyment uh, is it, is it online more. only as a magazine or is there a print version or is there you know i get it online i think it's only online but i could be wrong okay so i've just clicked on the link in, in our show notes and it's offered me to sign up to a newsletter as well do you know what? i'm signing up to more and more newsletters and doing less social media these days um because then you get to choose what hits your inbox and yes you end up with an inbox full of stuff but you don't have to read it all and sometimes and it's just a bit more you just bit more set tight. up a i have a i have a mailbox my subscriptions at gmail.com <laughs> I think I currently have 60,000 unread <laughs> mail. <laughs> but uh, that's how you do it, I think. Yeah. And by the way, you know, have you thought of like doing a road trip, but in every location, just taking a photograph of the local postcard? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. um i haven't i have thought about replicating yeah do, doing yeah. you know deliberately kind of. postcard type shots but i usually try and just capture those and yeah as a way of just you know ticking the box and then move on yeah. to something more creative it's a it's it there's um 
yeah a bit like the old sort of kodak moment spots yeah. um i hadn't hadn't seen one for a gazillion years and then a few years ago we were in a hotel at the north end of lake garda in italy beautiful beautiful place and they had one of these things it was like a little eight by ten picture frame on a stick it's like this and it's like put your camera uh, here and take this photo. oh yeah, yeah i've seen those yeah wow sure. but look out places yeah yeah right. i hadn't seen those i was like i'm gonna have to do this because i'm not going to be able to move on it's going to block my it's the, 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 the things the irony of it is it blocks your creativity <laughs> until, you, until you take the shot and think okay all right i've done that now my brain can let that go now <laughs> see i would approach that and i would just do a whole series where the only thing in focus is the frame itself yeah, yes that yeah. that feels like an ironic picture that would attract me so the landscape i did, is I did take the shot i was told to take but i took it ironically <laughs> <laughs> exactly in other words point your camera here you end up with like you know, forty pictures of you know picture yeah, frames. Yeah, you could point the wrong way through it, I suppose. I don't know. True, true. That's another great example of how to use those things. Um, anyway, uh, a pleasure. Uh, this has been fun. Um, yes, it has. Thank you. Yes, I, I sense we might have dived down another rabbit hole there. So thank you for hauling probably. us back out before it was too late. <laughs> uh, yeah. So absolutely, thank you. Good to speak to you, um, and okay. thank you everybody for listening. And You're back uh, next hopefully week. Hopefully, there'll be three of us next week. I think. I'm not sure, yeah. uh, but we're hoping <laughs> at some point normal service will be resumed as the summer comes to a close or summer travels come to a close. Your viewership is very important to us, but st you know, st stay with us as. Our options have changed. Absolutely. <laughs> to that. We'll be we'll be back in some form next week. Anyway. We will be. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Bye.